Hello, I am taking on a challenge to be every playable Nintendo published game. Welcome to the next episode. The next game is Super Punch-Out for the Arcade. After the huge success of the first Punch-Out title, Nintendo R&D 3, led by Genyo Takeda, wasted no time working on a sequel. In fact, these games both came out in the same year, 1984. Takeda said that they tried to brainstorm new components to add to the game, but they ultimately decided that there wasn't much else they could do within the confines of a boxing game. The only thing that they did differently was that they had decided to allow your opponents to do illegal boxing moves, adding a bit more variety in the type of attacks that they throw at you. Because of this, the game was largely the same as the first game mechanically. The only new movement option is a downward dodge. The player character is the same in this one too, although it looks like he's cleaned up his hairstyle a bit since we last saw him. Interestingly, there's one less opponent you have to face off against in this game than in the first one. I don't know if this was due to time constraints, or if they just figured that the game's higher difficulty warranted one less boxer. On that note, despite the lower number of opponents, this one is definitely harder than the first game, and this is largely due to the final opponent you face off against. This was easily the hardest game I played up until this point, and it even caused me to make a shameful compromise that I will go over later in the video. Alright, let's jump into my time with the game. All the menus are essentially identical here, and after entering a name, you face off against the first opponent, Bear Hugger from Canada. Immediately when fighting this guy, I realized that he was notably harder than Glass Joe. I tried mashing body blows to see if he worked similar to Glass Joe in the first game, but instead Bear Hugger was completely unfazed by the attack and stuck out his tongue to mock my meager strength. Oh, they actually have a downwards dodge now. Wait. Ew! I was still experimenting with my controls a bit in this first run, and as a result, he clobbered me and I was knocked out. By the next run though, I had settled on a control scheme I was happy with, and I gave it a more serious try. The main strategy you need to follow is to simply dodge his punches and punish with blows to the head. You can hit him quite a few times each time he whiffs an attack, and reacting to his moves is pretty easy. However, Bear Hugger had one last surprise in store for me. After I knocked him down, he came back up and immediately came up to me and did a two-handed smash on me. I tried to dodge to the side, but it didn't do me any good, and the move immediately knocked me down. Yeesh, it's only the first boss, and he already has a move that knocks me down in one hit. To dodge this move, you have to use the new ducking dodge, as both of the side dodges aren't enough to escape it. He does this move every time you knock him down. And while this move is honestly pretty easy to dodge when you know it is coming, I died an embarrassing amount of times to it. The worst part is, he sticks his tongue out and mocks you every time he hits you with it. To showcase just how many times I got hit by this move, here's a montage of most of the times I got hit by him during my four hours of playing the game. The guy who hugs bears and- Oh, whoa! Yeah, yeah. Oh, I did it again! I forgot he starts with bear hugging. I forgot again! Oh my goodness, will I ever remember? <laughs> I forgot about that move. I forgot. I forgot. Oh, I... Oh, I... I forgot. I... I... Man, I... Why is it so hard for me to remember that move? Oh, you... Oh my goodness. Oh, pfft. I... I... I forgot. <laughs> I forgot. Why am I always forgetting it? Despite how frustrating it is to get hit by this move, as long as you do well enough in the rest of the fight, you'll still win, even if you get hit by it both times after the first two downs. I got hit by it both times during this second attempt, but I still managed to knock him down a third time, and Bear Hugger was defeated. Next up was Dragon Chan from Hong Kong. When this fighter is introduced, a brief section from the theme of Bruce Lee's Enter the Dragon is played. In this fight, I pretty quickly realized that Dragon Chan's normal attacks cannot be easily punished. Instead, he is always in a stance where he protects everything but one particular angle. You need to punch to the side that he leaves open during this time, although that's a bit easier said than done since he will often suddenly switch which angle he is protecting. During this first run, after enough time passed, Dragon Chan started jumping all over the place before finally jumping and doing a sweeping kick across the screen. This is definitely one of those illegal moves I was talking about before. Similar to Bear Hugger's two-handed smash, this move takes you out in one hit, and the only way to dodge it is to duck. Hmm, I'm starting to see a theme here. Anyway, once you dodge this move, you can get a ton of punches in on him, so eventually I was actually happy to see this move since it meant I got a bunch of free hits in. 
Unfortunately, I just wasn't good at dodging the move yet, and after being knocked down a second time due to his normal attacks, I went down a third time to this super move once again, and I lost the fight. Similar to the first game, you get one retry per run, so thankfully I was given a second shot at the guy. One thing I noticed during the second attempt was that in order to punish the flying kick, you had to punch in the right direction, which was surprisingly tough to predict because of how much he jumped around. I did eventually get the hang of it though, and I even managed to knock him out during this attempt. These first two may not have been quite as simple as Glass Joe and Piston Hurricane from the first game, but I was still thankfully able to figure them out pretty quickly. Next up was Vodka Dragensky from the USSR. If you played the future games in the series, you probably know this guy as Soda Popinski, a later watered down name to remove the reference to alcohol. This guy was a notable step up from the last two. For our first encounter, all he did was throw out these super fast jabs to the head. I tried to get good at dodging them, but he was so fast that I failed spectacularly, and I ended up getting absolutely clobbered by the guy. I had already lost my retry at this point, so it was back to the beginning for me. Similar to the first Punch-Out game, you have to do every fight from the beginning after your second loss. That's not too bad this early on, but as you get further and further in, it gets more and more difficult to learn anything due to how far back you go. Unfortunately, in my next run, I lost both of my lives to Dragon Chan. I guess I didn't totally have this guy figured out yet. Like the first game, you have three minutes to KO your opponent, and if you don't knock them down three times before the three minutes are up, you lose the fight no matter how good you were doing. Both of my losses here were due to timeouts. Finally, on my next run though, I was able to rematch Vodka Drogensky. During this run, I realized that the best way to deal with his jabs was just to keep your arms up defensively and block them instead. It took me a while to realize exactly how it worked, but during this phase of the fight, he followed a pretty consistent pattern. He will jab once, then immediately throw out a hook which you can dodge and punish. Then he'll do this again, but with two jabs this time before the hook. After this, he alternates back and forth between one jab and two jabs between each hook. I was starting to figure it out on this run, but it wasn't enough, and I lost and was sent back to the beginning. Finally, on the next run, I started to do better on the guy. However, later on in the fight, he completely changes up his moveset. While he'll still occasionally throw out a jab to the head, he mostly just throws out hooks and a new powerful uppercut instead. Fortunately, I was generally able to react to these and follow up with the punish, and during this run, I finally knocked him out. Next up was the second to last boxer, Great Tiger, the champion of India. Man, I was not ready for this guy. Vodka Drakensky was nothing compared to him. During the normal parts of the fight, his punches come out really fast, and I was never able to react fast enough to them. However, the worst part was his super move. Great Tiger would back up a bit, then come charging in with a bunch of alternating head and body blows. After doing these for a while, he'll finally end with three uppercuts in a row. This move is actually pretty similar to Piston Hurricane's super move from the first game, but for some reason, it's just so difficult in this fight. The move is just really hard to dodge. You had to block each of the body and head blows by alternating defensive positions, then react to his uppercuts and dodge, which wasn't easy. Even if you could dodge all of this and get a punish in, it wasted so much time because of how long the move was. During my first encounter with him, I got absolutely demolished by this move, and it was back to square one for me. This guy took me over an hour of attempts to finally beat, which was almost as long as it took me to beat Mr. Sandman, the final boss of the first game. For the first part of the fight, I would throw out punches to his head. While he will always block this and throw out a punch himself, if I immediately dodged, I could often punish his counter. Unfortunately, this wasn't totally consistent, as he would often just block my counterattack or punish me faster than I could dodge. The real key to figuring out this fight involved his super move. Similar to Bald Bull in the first game, there's a moment just before the attack that you can throw out a body blow and get an instant knockdown on him regardless of how much life he has left. The window for this is pretty small, but getting this timing down was essential to getting through this fight, as it was difficult to do enough damage to him otherwise. Finally, after many, many attempts, Great Tiger was defeated. Up next was the final battle, the champion of the world, Super Macho Man. During his introduction, Super Macho Man spins around and strikes an incredible pose. My first encounter with him did not go well. Super Macho Man almost immediately did a spinning move that knocks you out immediately if you don't do the downward dodge. Unlike the other one-hit moves we've seen so far, this one comes out super fast, and he does it a ton during the fight too. After getting knocked down immediately, he finished me off with a jab and it was over already. If you get knocked down twice like this before dealing any damage, you get KO'd early. This fight was absolutely brutal. Part of what made him so difficult to learn was that I had to go through all the opponents just to get a chance to learn his moveset, and he hit so hard that I barely had any time to even learn his moves every time I got to him. 
Not to mention I still struggled a lot with Great Tiger, so often when I finally did get to him, I only had one try remaining. After my first loss against him, I put the game down and decided to try again during the next stream. During this next entire stream, I barely got any better at him. It turns out, whenever he does the big swing, he'll often do it multiple times. But sometimes he throws out weaker versions of it throughout the battle too. These versions may not be as strong, but he throws them out super quickly. And once again, you have to do the ducking dodge to avoid it. Because of all the other types of attacks he has, knowing when exactly to duck is extremely tough, and my attempts never really lasted long enough for me to build any muscle memory. I even tried switching to a controller at one point, but something about the inputs did not work well with the controller, and I ended up doing even worse. Inputs are already a little clunky with this game, and for some reason, with the controller, it seemed like even more my inputs were either getting dropped or they would come out really late. After an entire stream with little to no progress on the guy, it was time to make a decision. Going into this challenge, I always knew that the thought of using save states to practice was an option I might end up considering. To be clear, I only want to use save states to practice. I will always want to do a complete run without save states afterwards. My thought here was to place a save state at Super Macho Man, learn the fight, then go back to the beginning of the game and do a complete run without save states. I brought this up to my YouTube community at the time, and the general consensus was that people were okay with me using save states to practice. Another component I considered when making this decision was that some of the games I haven't gotten to yet are games I have already used save states to practice in the past, such as Punch-Out on the NES. At this point, it is already too late for me to play games like this without the help of save state practicing, since I will inevitably use some of my previously gained save state experience when I play these titles. Ultimately, while I know some people will not be happy with my decision, I decided to use save states to practice this game. I only plan on doing this sparingly on really difficult titles, and I will generally try to do it without save states for a while before throwing in the towel. A lot of these old titles were just so punishing when it came to checkpoints, and I can save quite a bit of time by practicing them first. I've got a lot of games to get to, after all. Anyway, with that off my chest, it was time to practice Super Macho Man, and boy did this make a difference. Don't get me wrong though, it still took a long time to get even remotely comfortable with this fight. When it comes down to it, this fight is all about being able to react to whether or not you need to duck or dodge to the side. While I eventually found it pretty easy to react to his one-hit move, since that had a bit more of a wind-up, his quick swipes that you had to duck came out so incredibly fast. The best way to see this move coming is that he will always shimmy his feet a little bit before the attack, and you can use that to help you react to the move better. It's still tough though, and you'll need to be giving the game your full attention to even stand a chance. After a couple of victories using save states to practice, it was time for the real deal. Unfortunately, at this point, I was a little rusty on the previous fights, so I actually lost a life to Great Tiger along the way. Bummer, now I only had one try to beat Super Macho Man. But hey, I practiced a bunch, surely I got this, right? Well, the stress got to me, and I immediately got clobbered twice by his one-hit Cyclone, and I was KO'd before the clock even hit 20 seconds. Brutal. Guess it was only fitting that I'd still have to feel the pain of starting over at least once more. On my next run, I thankfully beat Great Tiger on my first try, so now I had two attempts, and boy did I need them. Even with all that practice, it takes a while to get into the right mindset after all those previous fights. While I did a bit better on my first life, I still kept getting hit by that Cyclone move, and I was KO'd again. Now I was down to my last life. Time to focus in. Finally, I was doing fantastic. I had knocked him down twice, and I hadn't even gone down once yet. After dodging a few more Cyclones, a hook, and an uppercut, I got enough punches in to knock him down a third time, and Super Macho Man was finally KO'd. After this, you hold up the champion's belt triumphantly. What a satisfying victory, even if I did take a few shortcuts to get here. After this, you can continually defend your title through rematches against all the previous opponents, but these get way harder, and I was content with just getting the champion's belt. With that, Super Punch-Out was complete. On to the review. This game is very similar to the original game released earlier in the year. There may be one less fight, but the harder difficulty balances it out, at least when it comes to how long the game took to beat. Even with save states, this one took me longer than the first title. Honestly, a lot of my praises and gripes are largely unchanged here. Once again, learning the battles is a ton of fun, and each of the fighters are so unique. Finally holding up that champion's belt is also an immensely satisfying accomplishment. However, the controls still feel a bit clunky, and now more than ever do I wish the game either gave you more lives or a chance to practice the fights individually. Some people may not agree with this criticism, but I find that if I get to a point where I want to use save states to practice a game, then I would probably enjoy the game a bit more if they were more generous with their checkpoints. 
I ended up giving the game the same score as the original, a 7 out of 10. Thinking back on both of the arcade Punch-Out titles, I have a hard time saying which of the two I prefer. I guess I would say the original if I had to choose, since it was a more fresh concept. However, despite the difficulty, I actually think I liked Super Macho Man as a final battle more than I did Mr. Sandman. Super Macho Man will forever be remembered as the guy who finally broke me down and made me use save states. Thanks for watching the video! If you want to see more of these in the future, make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you won't miss out on the next one. Also leave a like if you enjoyed it, since it will help the channel grow and motivate me to continue this series. I hope I will see you in the next step of my quest to beat every Nintendo game.